Today, we are going to cook a dish from every country in the world. Mmm. We recently surpassed 1 million subscribers on YouTube. And that's a pretty crazy number. Seriously, 1 million of you guys around the world who tune in every week to watch Sheldon fail at cooking. Yo, why are you so bad at cooking? Me? Yeah. It's just crazy to think that there are people from all around the world from vastly different cultures and backgrounds who come together and connect through the content that we make. So to celebrate all of you guys and our different cultures and backgrounds, we are going to cook a dish from every country that you're subscribed from. And according to YouTube analytics, that's a total of 95 different countries and regions. So let's get started. Cut the potatoes. Keep the oil to 365 degrees Celsius. While the oil heats up, make the gravy. Ooh, how do you make gravy? Dump fries in the hot oil until they're crispy brown for around 8 to 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh! Place the fries on the plate, followed by cheese curds and the gravy. Mm -hmm. Come on. I kind of like to do better. Next we got Jamaican jerk chicken. chicken. Preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Dry the chicken legs with a paper towel. Poke holes into the chicken legs with forks. Now for mixing. In a large bowl, combine all the remaining ingredients. <laughs> That much? You can't it's tell. more, it's more, it's more. Same with a lot. Mix it all up and then evenly distribute that under the surface of the chicken skin. Place all the chicken on a large baking sheet and put it in the oven for 40 minutes. And while that's baking in there, we're gonna move on to the next country. The Bahamas! And the national dish is conch salad. Conch, what the hell is this? Yeah. There's, a, there's a serious disease that conch has yeah, yeah, when you yeah. eat it raw. It's something like Vibrium volcanicus or something like that. You start getting blisters and then your meat starts eating itself. Chop conch into one quarter inch pieces. Dice all the vegetables and put them in the same bowl. Season with salt and pepper. Mix the salad and serve. Oh, there's no right, video of this. Is that we don't die? Okay, we still have a few more. Okay, Dude, this smells very cinnamony. Three, right. two, Three, one, two, cheers. One. I got the smallest one. Why does this taste so sweet? <laughs> I'm gonna go chop yeah. the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Next country is Puerto Rico. Wait, the national dish of Puerto Rico is called Mo Mofongo. 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 It's something called a plantain ball. I have never enjoyed plantains. Peel plantains and cut them into one inch slices. Fry plantains until golden brown for four to six minutes and then put the plantains into a large mixing bowl along with garlic paste, add some pork grinds and mash thoroughly. Finally, shape the mofongo into four balls and then serve them on a plate. Uh, you, you write the instructions, I still have no idea what a mofongo is. Once we try it, if you think it's good, we say rico. Okay. If it's not good, we say we don't say it. I mean, you wanna make a make of Mike's hands? Okay. I think it's actually served with a sauce though. Dude, people from Puerto Rico are definitely drinking a lot of water. Man. <laughs> Bro, how do you swallow this thing? Uh, we're running a big problem, guys. What? We're supposed to cook 90 country. dishes, and right now we've cooked five. <sighs> we've cooked five dishes, man. After a whole day, this like a. This took 20 days. 20 days! And that's 20 days we don't have because Sheldon is actually leaving off to China at the end of this week with his mom. So realistically, we only have around five days to complete every country. So here's the plan. First, we'll need to divide and conquer. There is just no way we'll finish all the dishes if we're cooking together. With that being said, we need to cook about 30 dishes each every day for the next four days. And according to the math and our cooking skills, this will take about eight to 10 hours per day. Two, we need a bigger space because our kitchen at home can only accommodate for maybe one to two chefs. So we rented out a commercial studio kitchen space so all three of us can cook at the exact same time. Why you gotta hold it there, man? Bro, I'm cutting, I'm peeling it, dude. Three, we need a bigger team because right now we only have me, Sheldon, Edward, and Ronnie, and that is not enough hands to make this possible. So we brought on two additional videographers along with two assistants to make sure that there is no time wasted between dishes. And finally, the last thing we need are groceries and a sh ton of them. A lot of groceries. <laughs> $1,000. This is what $1,000 grocery for. Jesus. You know what I mean? I'm not even done, yo. Look at that. Okay, all right, Sheldon, are you ready to cook today? Let's do it. I got a... I'm gonna make some uh, 
Good food. Yeah, you trying to start a fight with my girlfriend? What? You gave him an ex-girlfriend's country. <laughs> what is it? Oh shit, did I? Give me Switzerland. You guys gonna roast me for it? I have never had a good taco before. And I've been to like LA, Mexico, and Taco Bell. First, you're gonna cut and prepare the veggies. Then you're gonna bake the taco shells. Look at that, whoa. You're gonna cook the ground beef and season it with taco seasoning. And then finally, you're gonna assemble and serve. And then you're gonna hire a macchiato band and then play that song. First meal, guys. Taco. Salud to our 1,135 fans from Mexico. Mm. Guys, we're done with Mexico. We're gonna move on to the next country, which is Costa Rica. And the food is called Gallo Pico. First off, the prep. Dice and cut up your onions, your peppers, and your cilantro. Heat up your oil in a pan and toss in your onions and your peppers. Then add the beans with the bean broth and cook for two minutes. Then add in your day old rice and toss it well and keep cooking it. Then add in your cilantro. And finally, add in your salsa and then stir fry for another minute. And then serve. We got the gallo pico and this. It's for our 10 fans in Costa Rica. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to all 10 of you, all right? I'm sorry, Costa Rica. First up, we have from Chile, Cazuela de Ave. This sounds cool. It's literally just chicken noodle soup. Step one, you chop the onion, chop the carrots, chop the corn, chop the potatoes, chop the celery, chop the garlic, parsley, chop the squash. We heat up the chicken first and then put them all into a pot and boil them. From Chile, we got here Cazuela de Ave, which is basically chicken noodle soup. This is for all 58 of you guys from Chile. Muchas gracias. Oh my god. Mm, that is so good. Good job, Chile. Good dish. Next country I have is Peru. And the national dish in Peru is ceviche. First, you want to cut the tuna. And next, you want to marinate the fish in lime. Slice some red onions, cherry tomatoes, and fresh jalapenos. After, slice some avocado. Put the tuna and vegetables in a large bowl and mix well. Add some avocado and finish off with salt, pepper, cilantro, and olive oil. And then finally, serve. So we got a plate of ceviche here with raw tuna that I don't know if sashimi grade or if it has parasites, so. A total of 47 fans in Peru, which means I'm risking my life for 47 fans here. Salud to the Peru fans. Very, very good. Let me be honest with you, that fish could be food poisoning, by the way. I don't know if it's sashimi grade, so. Just eat it, bro, whatever, man. Yo, we only live once anyways, but come on. Anyways, yo, get back to your station. Brazil, aula. This is the coxina from Brazil. Let's give it a try. I, I like the shape of it. For Argentina, the national dish we got is bueno con wasa. Colombia, Panama, Dominican Republic. It's time to eat esta empanada de carne. No, bro, it's not bad, it's not bad. Like, the flavor is there. But what will make this dish taste 10 times better is my mom's chili. And my mom's chili is back in stock and on sale. Ever since we sold out, we've been working super hard to make enough chili oil for everybody. There were a lot of you in the wait list. But we grinded hard to make just enough bottles for everybody and a bit more for those of you who haven't waitlisted. In time for our first ever 25% off Black Friday sale. But we're selling out fast. So grab a bottle at mymomschili.com, link in description. Enjoy my mom's chili and Happy Black Friday. All right guys, we finished South America and we moved on to Europe. I have to make a paella now. National dish of Spain. Next we got Ireland. We're making shepherd's pie. Chop onion into dices and cut tomato into one inch chunks. Peel and dice your potatoes into cubes. Then bring a pot of salted water to a boil and add in the potatoes and cook until tender. I'm slicing the squid into rings. I heat the seafood stock, white wine with a bit of saffron in a pot. Add olive oil into a large saucepan. Saute the diced onion and add the garlic. While it's boiling, chop your onions and chop your carrots. Why you gotta hold it there, man? Bro, I'm cutting, I'm peeling it, dude. Next, add the diced tomatoes, paprika, and a bit of salt. Stir and cook the sofrito until it's a jam-like texture. Ready to mash the carrots and then set aside. Heat oil in a large frying pan. Add in your onion, ground beef, ketchup, beef broth. Spread the ground beef in an even layer on the bottom of a two-quart casserole dish. Add rice on top, add broth and mixture to the pot. Add the shrimp and squid on top and cook for another 10 minutes. And then spread a layer of mashed carrots, top with mashed potato mixture, and sprinkle with the remaining shredded cheese. Bake in the preheated oven for 20 minutes or until golden brown, and then serve. This is seafood paella from Spain. And it is for all 388 of you guys who are subscribed to us. We got 1,640 Irish fans. Let's uh, eat some pie for you guys. Cheers. Bro, that's so good.
Oh, that is so good, man. That is a shepherd's pie. That is Irish Goloki approved. The United Kingdom, which I'll be doing the remainder of the UK in a British accent. You guessed it, it's not a, a tea, it's fish and chips. Let's get started. For the prep, you wanna peel and cut the potato into strips. I thought you don't have to peel if you're making fries. Why do you have to peel it? Keep it all natural, keep the skin on. Skin on, team skin on. Anyone here circumcised though? After that, you want to put the sliced potatoes in a medium bowl with cold water. Mix flour, salt, pepper, and baking powder into a separate bowl. Add some milk, add an egg, and stir until the batter is smooth. Meanwhile, you want to heat up a large pot of oil to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Drain and pat dry the potatoes and deep fry them for about 5 minutes until they're golden and crispy. Dredge the cotton in batter, fry the fish in batches until golden brown on all sides, Drain on paper towel. Next, you want to do one final fry of the potatoes for one to two minutes until it's ready to eat. Fish and chips. From the UK. Um, first, we're going to try the chips. Bloody good. And then we're going to try the ch uh, fish. It's good. This dish is for the 21,000 of you guys that are from the UK. Cheerios. Iceland or Germany. We are making Bratwurst or Bratwurst. From Belgium, Bull Feet, which is mussels with fries. Chopped shallots finely. Thinly sliced garlic, minced the parsley. Gotta slice one onion and one apple into slices. Mince two cloves of garlic, add a tablespoon of oil on a pan, and heat over medium heat. Add shallots, garlic, and cook until softened. Add the white wine and season with salt and pepper. Step four, add the mussels, cover it up, and steam for three minutes. You're gonna add five sausages for the bratwurst and cook until brown. I really, really hope that Antarctica does not subscribe. <laughs> Transfer the mussels into a large serving bowl. Step six, add the creme fraiche, parsley, butter, chives, and add it to the remaining cooking liquid to form a sauce. Then you're gonna remove the sausage to a clean plate and add the onions, apples, and garlic. Then you're gonna saute the onions, apples, and garlic over medium for about five minutes or until the onions are soft. Then you're gonna add the sauerkraut, the paprika, the pepper, and one cup of chicken broth. And you're gonna stir it, combine it, and dissolve any brown bits off the bottom of the skillet. Step seven, pour the sauce over the mussels. Step eight, serve your dish. All right, Belgian moule frite. Mussels with fries made for all 1,500 of you. This looks really good. By the way, guys, from Germany, we have a lot of fans. What's up, Hassan? 45,000 of you guys enjoy the Bratz Quest. I think I made it a tad bit salty, but it still tastes very good. I'm not gonna lie, Germany, I finished most of the bratwurst. I gotta say, you guys should call it Bratfest. All right, next up, we have the recipe from the France. It is the crepes. First, you wanna whisk some flour and egg in a mixing bowl, and then gradually add milk while stirring. Add salt and melted butter and beat it until it's smooth. I always beat it until it's smooth. Pour the batter onto the pan using about one fourth cup batter. Till the pan until the batter coats the whole pan in an even surface. Cook until the bottom of the crepe is lightly brown and then the top is not wet anymore. Then you can flip over and cook on the other side as well. And you want to top off with some strawberries and whipping cream. Bon appetit! In France, we have about 3,200 subscribers, so this is for you guys. Wow, wow, that was really good. Poland! And the dish is pierogies. One flour, cold water, beaten egg, and salt, and then we're gonna mix it until a smooth dough form. Put the potatoes in a large pot, and bring it to a boil and cook until it's tender. Mash potatoes until they're smooth. Place bacon in a large skillet and cook over medium high heat. Drain the bacon slices. We're gonna crumble and stir it into the mashed potatoes. Stir in cheese and season with salt and pepper. We're gonna roll the dough out on a floured surface. Cut out three inch circles with a cookie cutter and fold it together like a dumpling. Then we're just gonna throw the pierogies in boiling water and then cook. Actually, it tastes like a pierogi. It's actually not bad. Like, genuinely not bad. Austria, the Wiener Schnitzel. Beat the meat. Heat a quarter inch of oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Dip the pork chops into flour, then into egg, and then into the breadcrumbs. Pan fry it for about five minutes each side. Voila, Wiener Schnitzel. We're supposed to have it with lemon slices. 
the Netherlands. Stamp pot. Sausage and potatoes. Cut the potatoes into cubes, and then you want to cut the kale. Finely chop two cloves of garlic. Add the potatoes into the boiling water along with some bay leaves. Cook for about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, you want to heat two tablespoons of butter in a skillet over medium heat. Add some chopped shallots. Add the kale. Drain off the water from the potatoes and remove the bay leaves. Mash the potatoes along with butter, milk, salt, and pepper, and add the kale into it and stir. Put the sausage on top of the mashed potatoes and serve it. Potatoes. Mmm, go, go, go. Mm. Dude, this is gonna knock me out if I like, finish the whole thing. For the things that we haven't finished, we're actually giving it to our PAs over here. You wanna point the camera? They don't feed us. Oh I'm just joking, they're very kind. <laughs> pretty good. Eh, no thanks. <laughs> it's pretty good. And as we were approaching the end of the day, I realized that we were, we were far behind. And that's a wrap for today. Our target was 10 dishes each. I did about like, Seven? I didn't make 10 dishes. And then how many were you at? <laughs> 10. You actually made 10. Yes! I made all my dishes! All the dishes we didn't finish today, we have to do tomorrow. But we're getting down to the wire, guys. Like, it's, uh, it's getting a little bit stressful, to be honest. All right, guys, top of the morning. It is day two. We're at the studio again today. Uh, since I missed out two recipes yesterday, I have to make up for them today. Sheldon was the fastest yesterday, which he only has 10 recipes to cook today, and Edward has, I think, around 12 recipes. Let's get started. We have the Mama Liga from Romania. This is a bellini. It's a national dish in Russia. Mm. Ukrainian borscht. 850 of you from Ukraine. Oh, you know, the same thing in, in Cantonese called los and tong. Swedish meatballs. It's very flavorful. With Europe finally done, it's time to move on to Africa. The first country we have in Africa is none other than Nigeria. And the national dish of Nigeria is actually jollof rice. Blend tomatoes and red pepper in a food processor or blender until everything is mixed and blended really well. In a medium sized pan, heat oil on a medium to high heat. Once the oil is hot, add in the onions and stir fry until it's golden brown, then set aside. Once the onion is golden brown, add in the tomato sauce and stir fry for another two to three minutes. After that, you wanna mix your chicken stock back into your tomato mixture along with all the seasoning and boil for about 10 minutes. Next, you want to add the parboiled rice into your mixture and you want to make sure to stir it really well. And also keep an eye on the water level because you might need to add more water to make sure the rice is being cooked properly. Finally, add some bay leaves, turn down the heat to a low medium heat and let it cook for another 20 to 30 minutes. After about 20 to 30 minutes, the rice should absorb all the tomato and the flavors. Then at that point, you want to add a little more tomato sauce in it, cook it for five to 10 minutes, and then the jollof rice should be ready to serve. All right, guys, we have Nigerian's national dish, which is the jollof rice here. And to the 123 of you guys from Nigeria, Inagwana, which means, apparently means, hi, how are you, in Hausa. Not only were we pleasantly surprised by the taste of the dishes, Good God. Mm, really good. It really opened our eyes to just how diverse food can be depending on your cultural background. Here we got Morocco, the uh, couscous. Mmm, that's good, that's good. I love the raisins. Oh. And although we might share similar ingredients among different countries, how the ingredients are put together makes for such unique and different flavors that we've never had before. Add the green bananas. Step five, pour water in, let it come to a boil and simmer. All right, here we go. Matoke from Uganda. This is for all 67 of you guys from Uganda. Honestly, the sauce is actually pretty good. I would mix this with rice, and I think it'd be better than with banana. And although we have our own preferences for different foods, it never hurts to try out something new. The we have here is a koshari. Right here, you see this? Bro, Tink Tut definitely had it down, man. Bro, this is good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it tastes almost like a deconstructed shawarma. It's a little more sour with a little more like tomato. Well, this is good. And although there were some really great tasting dishes, there were also some mm, not so great tasting dishes. Step four, keep stirring and pressing the mixture against the sides of the pan to break up the lump. All right, and then like just mix it. And if it's hard to mix, just keep mixing it. And then allow it to cook for two to three minutes. We got here Kenya's dish, ugali. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think I have high expectations for this. Ah. I wanted to like it. But also dishes from places that I would have never expected to taste so good. This is the maskouf from Iraq and it's a national dish there. To all the fans from Iraq, salam walikam. I will put this, if on the same level and above 
Cantonese steamed fish. Packing in flavor, holy sh! Might be the top dish I made so far. United Arab Emirates, UAE, Saudi Arabia. We are making kabsa, which is Saudi chicken and rice. Chicken shawarma is the official dish. Diced an onion and minced six cloves of garlic. Place the chicken pieces in a bowl and using your hands, rub the chicken with vegetable oil until it's well covered. Place on a tray and bake it for 30 minutes. Mince a clove of garlic, find all the marinated ingredients into a bag, put these skinless chicken thighs in there and marinate them for three hours. Mix all the spices and salt in a small bowl. Rinse the rice in a sieve with running water until the water runs clear. Meanwhile, melt the butter in a pan and saute some onions and garlic until they're translucent and soft. Then add the diced tomatoes and tomato paste to create the sauce. Then add the chicken and stir until it's well coated with tomato sauce. Then add the rice and spices and mix it really well. Once it's boiling, reduce the heat to a simmer. Cover it loosely and leave a gap for the steam to escape. Cook it for around 20 minutes until you have cooked the rice. Then put the rice onto a serving dish, put the chicken pieces on top, add some raisins and then add seasoning to taste. Heat up a pan with olive oil. After the pan is finished preheating, I cook the chicken in the skillet for three to four minutes on each side. Step four, remove the chicken and cut them into pieces. Step five, prepare the yogurt sauce with Greek yogurt, garlic, cumin, lemon juice, and salt and pepper. Step six, put it all together into the shawarma wrap that we all know and love, ready to serve. All right, and now we have the national dish of the UAE, chicken shawarma. All right, we got the Saudi Arabian kabsa, which is Saudi chicken and rice. There are 1,500 of you guys from UAE who are sub to us. And this is to all 346 Arabic subscribers from Saudi Arabia. Ahlan, Ismi, Sheldon, Anatalib, Fi, Jamiati, Waterloo. Oh my god, Tiar Akle Afa Wusafa Anna Bahabi Habi Habibi baby bro. I didn't stir my spices that well. There's like random like chunks of spices that I eat as while I'm eating it. But despite that, it's still really, really good. Wow, I'm not considering going to Saudi Arabia. Holy this is freaking good. And as we finished off the nice Middle close. East, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, we were finally back on track. However, we were absolutely exhausted. I've, I've, I've been cooking for like six hours today. So for the last dish of the day, we decided to swap with our videographers to have them cook for us instead. Edwin, I, I gotta ask you to up for help supper me, bro. Victor, can you cook this dish for me? You're making for real? Yeah, I'm making for real. No, biryani. Today we are making Japan sushi. Thankfully, unlike the guys, I'm actually a chef. I actually know how to cook. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. You still want a job? Huh? Chop the onion and coriander leaves and keep them aside. Step two. Meanwhile, heat olive oil in a deep bottom pan. Once the oil is hot enough, add cumin seeds, bay leaves, green cardamom, and cloves in it and saute them for about a minute. Wait, is that, did I add everything? Finely chop the scallions, finely chop cilantro, minced garlic, and grate the ginger. We're gonna make the filling. So in a large bowl, combine the ground chicken, red onion, scallions, cilantro, garlic, ginger, Turmeric, garam masala, melted butter, and olive oil. Then we're gonna mix it well with our hands. Wonderful PA Victor, who is helping out with Edward right now. Uh, okay. He already made some rice. When the rice is done, combine rice vinegar, oil, sugar, and salt in a small saucepan over medium heat. Cook until the sugar has dissolved. First step is allowing the sauce to you know, cool down in your pan, and after that, just stir it in with your uh, sushi rice. Add chicken into it and so with split green chilies, turmeric, salt to taste, ginger garlic paste, red chili powder. Step number five. Mix with all the spices and cook for about two to three minutes. Turn the flames to medium again and add garlic masala in along with ginger, julienne, coriander, and mint leaves. Add rose water in it. Cook till the chicken is tender, then add one cup of cooked rice and spread evenly. Add the remaining saffron water and pour a ghee over it. You can now cook the dish without the lid and cover it with a lid to give off a dim effect due to the seam formation. Step number 10, cook for 10 to 15 minutes with a closed lid. Next, we're gonna place a tablespoon of filling in the dumpling wrapper. And using your finger, we're just gonna wrap it up, basically make it like a dumpling. Next, we're gonna bring a large pot of water to a boil and just basically throw all the dumplings in and cook it up. Yeah, lastly, we just serve the momos and yeah, we can enjoy. And final rule is assemble the nigiri sushi, which we're doing today. This is a national dish of Japan. Arigato, gozaimashita. This is Nepal's national dish, momos. And this is for all 1,200 of you guys. From India, we have 50,000 people in. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Arigato. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. You got it. Actually, you know how to cook? It's good, right? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Okay. Alright guys, we are finished cooking today. The good news is we're back on track. We did 10-10-10 today and I was able to catch up. 
And uh, as long as we get another 10, 10, 10 dishes from all, we should be good and then hit all the countries. So, right, good job, guys. Thank you. Yay. One more day, one more day. One more day. One more day for the gang, one more day. All right, peace. Sheldon actually made this for all of us, which says, Eat Hey Gang here. And uh, it's just to protect us from the oil stains because we all are wearing white today. The next country we have is Cambodia and their national dish is something called the Amok. We were well on track to finishing all the dishes on day four. We just had a few countries left from Southeast Asia and parts of Asia, including Cambodia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Laos, Philippines, and so on. But their food was so, so good. I'm happy you didn't make it nasty go right here. And as we reached the end of this journey, it made me realize that no matter what culture or background you're from, mm. we can all connect That's through good. food. Can you give it a try? It's actually really, I'm Chinese in Laos, but you know. Bro. As long as you have an open okay. mind and an empty really stomach. Really Whoa! Whoa, come on. Stop. Uh. Meaning it's really good. Oh shit! Let's go! And as we were finishing off the final three dishes, We just lost power. Uh, we just lost power. What the f Okay, uh, can one of you go down and check and then like, I'll do my prep work. Yo, okay, I'm, wait. Uh, just, yo, guys, power's out. For the yeah. building? Yeah, for the whole The building? Store. Yeah, yes. for the whole block. Oh, really? Holy yeah. At this point, we basically had two options. Number one, we can either pack it up and call it a day with 92 dishes completed, or we can finish the rest of the dishes in the dark. And with Sheldon's flight being the next morning, we had no other choice but to pack it up. And drive over to my house to finish the last three dishes in my basement, which happens to be where Canto Mando first started. We're gonna start with the first place, which is... Macau! But more importantly, why are we here? I know in why. this yellow background. And the reason is... This is the exact place that we started making YouTube videos. I was videos. just thinking that. About this is eight years ago. OG place. So just take a look around. And as three best friends who took a chance to chase our dreams, this wouldn't have been possible without the support from you guys every step of the way. So I want to take this time to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Not just for the support or the views, but for believing in us when no one else did. And although hitting a million subscribers is nice and all, it would mean absolutely nothing without you guys. So let's celebrate this achievement together. Thank you, Canto Mando Squad. All right, that's enough corny mic for the day. Let's get back to the video. The, the signature dish of Macau is actually, I'm not sure if it actually is pork chop bun. It's actually this dish called African chicken. African chicken? Faith, okay. In a large bowl, combine all the seasoning ingredients. Step three, marinate the pork with the seasoning for at least 15 minutes. Take your pork chop and dip it into potato starch and cover it. And pan fry it on the pan for four to five minutes until it's golden on each side. All right, bro. And if a power outage wasn't enough, this happens. Oh. Where is that? Fire alarm. From where? You can't cook down here, bro. I mean, first off, luckily, I can speak Mandarin, so I was able to understand the dangers of what we're doing. Right? Okay, alright guys, we're going upstairs now because Apparently we can't cook in the basement because there's not enough ventilation. I got yelled at by my dad, so... Well, he, he got Lucy Chen, bro. You guys full Chinese name said by his dad. No. Normally, it says it says to put mayonnaise and lettuce on the jiao bao, but I've actually never had that before. Really? Yeah, and normally it's like, I put some butter on. Like they to be fair, this is an Anthony Bourdain recipe. Yeah, yeah, we're not listening to no Anthony Bourdain, bro. Man's definitely not from Macau. Good. Anthony Bourdain knows this stuff. Oh yeah? Well, I mean, Anthony Bourdain... Rest in peace, by the way, Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain, I mean, yo, rest in peace, but like, dude. Like, I've, I've never ever had a pork, pork mm. bun in Macau with a mayonnaise, so... I'm, I don't know who to trust. A world-renowned chef or, or Sheldon? Mmm! <laughs> yo! The pork chop is really f***ing good, like, just different. the bun sucks, and the bun sucks because it's not the Acre Macau bun. Like it? This is good. Alright, now on to some more Chinese food. Mainland China, where I'm from, and the signature dish in mainland China is actually the Peking duck from Beijing. But, there is actually no way that we can make a Peking duck, right? So, instead, I'm switching that dish to the tomato and egg. Start by cutting the tomato into wedges and finally chopping the scallion. Next, you want to crack about three eggs and season it with sesame oil, white pepper, and salt. 
Preheat the wok to about medium heat. Start by putting the eggs in it and then removing it quickly. Start stir frying the tomatoes and finally add the eggs back in when the tomatoes are softened and you're pretty much done your dish. All right guys, so that's it. That's a tomato and egg. The signature dish of China. A big thank to our Chinese fans. We have a big following on Bilibili as well. Um, so thank you guys for watching our videos and a huge shout out to you VPNers who flip the firewall in China to watch our content because according to YouTube There's only 30 of you guys. Yeah, and I know there's we have way more Chinese fans than just 30 of you guys Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you Mmm, good job. Good. good job. Pretty good, right? Mm. That's all. And the last we save the best food for last Mike from Hong Kong, Hong Kong, we have Gale Yudan, which is curry fish balls. Woo! Let's go, Hong Kong! My favorite kind of food. Actually, I love Cantonese food. Step one, add two teaspoons of oil into a shallow frying pan. Fry the shallots and then make a little hole in the middle and add oil and chili paste. Next up, add the chicken stock and stir thoroughly, breaking up the curry and roux. Bring it to a boil and let thicken. And then add coconut milk, curry powder, soy sauce, white and black peppers, sugar, and finally the fish balls. Simmer for 10 minutes until the Curry thickens and fish balls are warmed through. Step four, serve immediately for two dollars for one skin. Hong Kong garlic yudan. All right. Let's Hong Kong garlic yudan. So this normally really good. you'll have a bunch on one stick. Yeah, you know what? Let's build that. Well, you're gonna build that? No, because we're pretty traditionalists. Cheers. Thank you guys Cheers. for supporting us all around right. the world. We have officially tried foods from all around the world after this. Mmm. Accurate. Yeah. Pretty damn wow. good. Pretty damn good. How shima? Okay, if you enjoyed this, click here to watch us try every country's fried rice and click here to watch the video. You can see your love. Peace!